in section 3.3, we're going to talk about measures of variation. And so what we're really interested is the spread of the data here. So how wide is our data spread out? And then also, how far away is every data point from the center? So those are the two main characteristics we always want to ask when we look at data here. So let's look at a, a small example here with some values. So 3, 9, 11, 12, 16, 32, and 7. And I'm just going to go ahead and plot these. Oh, let's put a few more values. How about 11 and 16 and 11 there? Okay. So here's 3. And I'm going to plot that. I'll just mark it with an X. Uh, we have the value of 9 there. Or I'm sorry, 7. And then we have 9 and 11 occurs three times, so I'll mark that, and then I'll just kind of go on with all of these. And so one of the key things that we're concerned about is the spread or the range, which we typically just go the max minus the minimum value in this case here. Okay. So if we wanted to find a fast way to get the spread, uh, we would just say, what's the range? So lowest to highest there. But uh, we want to find some better ways uh, to measure that actual spread there. So we're going to talk about the sample standard deviation and then also the sample variance. And we're going to denote the standard deviation by S and the variance by S squared. And so this means it's a summation of your data value minus the average. And we're going to square all of that before we add it up. And we're going to divide it by n minus 1, so 1 less than the sample size. And then we'll take the square root. Uh, for the variance, it's exactly the same thing, but without the square root. And then we're also going to talk about the population standard deviation. Now we're using a Greek letter, a sigma, to denote that we're talking about the population here. And it's going to be exactly the same thing, but instead of dividing by uh, n minus 1, we're going to divide by n, which we sometimes denote with a capital N. Um, we'll just use lowercase here. And then the variance is going to be uh, sigma squared. So same exact formula, but we're just dividing by n without the square root in this case here. And while we're writing uh, our Greek letters and regular letters, let's go ahead and put the mean there. So if you recall, the mean is x bar, and the uh, mu is going to end up being um, uh, denoted by a Greek letter. So populations are Greek letters, and then the uh, samples are denoted by regular letters. And these little illustrations that I wrote here is what I want you to think of when you think of standard deviation. I don't want you to get caught up uh, with the formula here. I want you to think of this normal distribution and then is it spread out or is it close together, very tight? So if it's spread out, we're going to have a large standard deviation. And if it's close together, we'll end up with a small standard deviation. So that's kind of the image you want to have in mind when you start talking about standard deviations there. But let's go ahead and use a formula to calculate something here. All right. So here's an example. And let's go ahead and find the standard deviation uh, for the following ages. And let's assume that this is going to be a sample here. So I went out, I asked a few people their age. I got these values here, 16, 20, 22, 18, and 24. And we're doing a small sample size here just for simplicity to illustrate uh, the formula. And so the sample standard deviation uh, is a summation of your data value minus the sample mean quantity squared, we're going to add all of that and divide it by n minus 1 and take the square root. So first things first is let's find that uh, average, uh, the sample mean here. So one of the things the standard deviations ask or answers is how far away is everyone from that measure of center. So let's go ahead and first figure that out. And so the measure of center here is going to be the sample mean, which we get about 20. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is for the standard deviation, we just want to know how far everyone is from that measure of center. So if I were to plot these, there's 20 and here's the first value, 16. I'm trying to find out a distance. How far away is the number 16 from that sample mean of 20? 
And I'm going to want to do that for all of the data values. I want to know how far away everyone is from there. Okay. Now, the issue is that when we, uh, when we do this, some of the values are towards the right and some of the values are towards the left. So when we're calculating distances, we are going to end up with some negative values. But in a nutshell, the standard deviation is kind of an average of these distances to the center. That's really what we want. Okay. So how do we get the distance? Well, you take a data value and you subtract uh, how far it is from the mean. So x minus x bar. So we're going to go 16 minus 20. And we're going to do this for every single data set. So we're just going to go through them. So 16, 20, 22, 18, and 24. We're going to go ahead and subtract that from each of these values here. So that's the x minus x bar. That's what's in the parentheses there. So it's a distance. Now, the problem is if we just add these guys up is that we have a negative value, and that's going to confuse things. That's going to, uh, that's going to end up throwing off our average there. So we have to find a clever way to momentarily make that positive. So let's recall some algebra. So if how do we turn everything positive? You guys recall the absolute value and how that graph looked there? But the issue is that there's a very sharp turn, that point there. Let's go back on memory lane and remember slopes. You have a negative slope on the left side, a positive slope on the right side. But right at that tip right there, what is the slope? It's, it's actually not zero because um, it's not flat. It's really undefined. So that creates a whole lot of problems in analysis and in calculus and for us to be able to figure out areas. So although that's the best way to make everything positive, we have to settle for another graph. If you recall this parabola from algebra, this guy is nice and smooth. And the actual slope at the center is zero. So that helps us out. So we momentarily square everything just to make it positive. But there's some issues with that. If we recall how to simplify things, so something like um, x plus 5, x minus 5, uh, we could create a factor of 1 and we would get x plus 5. Technically, these two equations are not equal. There's some domain restrictions we have to write there. Algebraically, it works nice, but they're not really the same exact um, uh, a thing. So we have to keep that into consideration. Whenever we square or square root things, we distort it a little bit. And so although we're going to square it momentarily to add it up, we're going to later on have to undo that. And that's where that square root is going to come from. So let's go ahead and square everything. That way it makes everything positive here. And now that's going to allow us to add everything up. So here's our summation of x minus x bar quantity squared, which we're going to get 40. Now, when we're doing an average, we divide by our sample size. But here we're dividing by one less than that. So the reason for that is we call this the degrees of freedom. So n minus 1. You've probably done this where you've had an exam. Uh, hopefully not a stats exam uh, uh, or a stats class where you did this. But you have uh, you on the first exam, you get whatever score. Then the next one, you get another score. Now, by the you get to the final, you need a specific score in order to average a pass. So there's no more flexibility. On the first two exams, you have freedom. But by the time you get to that last one, there's no more freedom there. Since we know what the mean should be, we have to get that certain score or else we're not going to pass. So that's where that n minus 1 comes from. It's just that flexibility that we allow. So we're going to go ahead and divide that summation by n minus 1, and that's going to give us 10 here. Now, this is the variance. This is also a measure of variation. It's a little bit more accurate than the standard deviation because if you recall, every time we tweak with it, we distort it a little bit. But the issue is the units. We're talking age here. I don't know what age squared is. Uh, I don't know what those units are. I know what feet squared is, but age squared, I don't know what that is. So in order to get back to the regular units, we're going to go ahead and take the square root. And although the standard deviation is not going to be as accurate as the variance, 
it allows us to match up the units here. So this would end up being our standard deviation. And it gives us an average distance of all the data values to that mean. Okay, this is a little bit long-winded here. Uh, the good news is on our calculators, we could go ahead and use the stats uh, button. If you input everything into a list, we could once again use a one var stat, just how we calculated uh, the mean and median. And it will go ahead and give that to us. And then we're going to look at SX, in this case, the sample standard deviation. Had we wanted the population standard deviation, then we would have looked at sigma X, uh, which is right below it.